Modern Subarus are powered by the F-Series engine, either FA or FB series. In the past, we had the EJ series and we had it for a very long time. In previous videos, I mentioned that I believe the EJ is superior to the newer, more modern F-Series. And in today's video, we're gonna go over five reasons why the EJ is still king over the F-Series engine. So guys, starting off the list, number one is tuning and horsepower potential. Now the EJ series engine easily takes the crown in this category from the F series. The EJ has been around for over 30 years at this point. It has a massive, vast amount of aftermarket part support. It has been tuned for just as long as it's been around. There's a ton of knowledge as far as tuning and horsepower tweaking of the EJ series engine. You can make reliably 300 horsepower, 500, 800, 1000 plus horsepower on an EJ. The real limit is your bank account. Any kind of horsepower you wanna make out of these engines, you can just about do it within reason because it has been around for so long, there are so many parts available and just everyone has been working with them for so long. Now, shifting over to the F-Series engine, it's a relatively new platform. It's only been out for about a decade. The parts availability in the aftermarket support is a lot less than on the EJ, just because it hasn't been out for that long and it is a little bit more complex and the tuning is different than the EJ, so companies are still figuring out how to get the most horsepower out of the F-Series engine when the EJ is pretty established on what to do and what not to do. The F-Series is still in that little bit of, uh, will this work or will this work and trying different things and uh, trying to maximize that potential. So as far as horsepower potential and tuning is concerned, the EJ series absolutely mops the floor with the F series. So I'm sure as time goes on, the F series will catch up to or surpass the EJ in the future. But as of today in 2024, the EJ still reigns supreme. Number two on our list kind of ties in with number one and that is track proven performance. The EJ series engine has been around for decades and has countless wins under its belt from World Rally Championship to grassroots motorsports events and everything in between. The EJ series engine has proven its reliability and performance across all kinds of conditions in all fields of motorsports over the years. Now the F series engine again is still new, it's fledgling, it builds on the heritage of the EJ series engine, but it doesn't have the pedigree that the EJ does. I'm sure in time, the F series will catch up or surpass the EJ, but as of today, 2024 again, the EJ series just is more track proven than the F series. Number three on the list is pretty subjective and that is sound and character. Now, a lot of people love the sound of an EJ and a lot of people love the sound of an F series engine, but you cannot deny that the EJ is iconic, that boxer rumble that everyone knows or everyone thinks about when they think Subaru. The unequal length header on the STI, on the EJ20, EJ25, has that iconic boxer rumble that we've all come to know and love, or well, most of us have come to know and love. <laughs> A lot of people like the F-Series engine because it's more smooth and more flat because of its equal length header. Now you can put an equal length header on an EJ Series engine and completely change the sound of it and take the boxer rumble away. But again, it comes down to your personal preference. But honestly, who are we kidding? When we think of Subaru, we think of the Boxer Rumble. We think of that iconic sound of the EJ series engine. Moving on, number four on our list will probably hit close to home for a lot of you viewers, and that is DIY friendliness and simplicity. Again, no argument here. The EJ series engine, of course, is more simple of a design than the F series. The F series is much more new more modern and has more engineering and complexity to it. Now, as far as DIY friendliness goes, the EJ series engine is very rudimentary and straightforward. When you look at a single overhead cam EJ series engine, you see oil pan and intake manifold, engine block halves and cylinder heads. It is pretty rudimentary as far as a boxer internal combustion engine comes. 
Now with the F-Series engine, you have the added complexity of timing chains, timing chain covers, lots of places to seal up for oil leaks, an upper and lower oil pan, cam carriers on the cylinder heads along with your cam covers, and it's just much more complex and less friendly to work on. Maintenance is much easier on the EJ series than the F series, as well as any kind of mechanical repair you need to do to the engine, the EJ is just far more easy. There's lots of parts available, there's lots of online resources for the EJ series engine, whereas the F series, again, is just not that friendly for the DIYer. Anything you gotta do, basically, you gotta pull the engine out. You can't do much with the engine in the car. There's more specialty tools required, and there's just that added complexity and finding service information, and the EJ just flat out wins. Now, a sub note to this, I think the EJ series engine actually gets better fuel economy. Now, I know there's a lot of variables at play here and I don't really have solid evidence, but I've got a 2011 Outback and a 2015 Outback. They've both got over 200,000 miles on them. The 2011 has an EJ253 with a TR690 CVT. The 15 has an FB25B with a TR580 CVT. I drive both of them the exact same way. I use the exact same grade of fuel in them, and I find a massive difference in the fuel economy. With that 2011, I averaged 28, 28 and a half MPGs combined. With the 2015, I normally get 24 and a half to 25 MPGs. So again, it could be some kind of bias towards the EJ series engine, but I do really think that it gets a little bit better fuel economy than the F series. Even though the F series is much more new, more modern and more complex and supposedly better with fuel. So to the end, number five, cost and availability. When it comes to modifying an EJ series or an F series engine, and whether you're in a WRX or STI, or a BRZ, et cetera, modifying these platforms has vastly different cost and availability associated with it. The EJ series is, again, a little bit cheaper to modify than the F series, just because it's been around for so much longer, there's so much more parts availability, and it's easier to tune and make horsepower than the F series. Now again, the F series is in its fledgling state. It's only been around for about a decade. Now I just saw the other day, IAG is offering more F series engines. I'm sure as time goes on again, there will be more F series engines coming out. The prices will come down, but again, as of right now, 2024, making of this video, the EJ series is just a little bit more affordable to modify to make more horsepower out of than the F series. And again, the availability of it is just more readily available in the aftermarket. So again, the EJ series still takes the crown. We've got five big reasons here of why the EJ is king. And uh, I don't know what else to say, guys. I know a lot of you have been asking about this in the comments of videos in the past where I said that I think the EJ is better. Well, here you go, guys. Five reasons why I think the EJ is better than the F-Series. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And why? Do you think the F-Series is better than the EJ? If you do, I want to hear about it. I want to know your reasoning why. If you agree with me and think the EJ is better than the F-Series, let me know in the comments below. If you have other reasons of why you think the EJ takes the crown from the F-Series, I'd love to hear those as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.